Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Keystone Virtual College Exploration. This program is a partnership between PACAC and StriveScan for all Pennsylvania students. My name is Liz Frasini. I'm a college counselor at Wyoming Seminary in Kingston, Pennsylvania. I'm also the chair of the College Fairs Committee for PACAC, and I'm thrilled to welcome you today to this session. Before we get started, there are a few housekeeping tips I'd like to review. First, your uh, cameras and microphone will be muted for the duration of the program as we're using the webinar feature of Zoom. So if you have any questions for the panelists today, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Additionally, you signed up for today's session at the PACAC website, and we're thrilled that you're here. If you'd like to view additional sessions that we have through November 6th, you can do so at www.pacac.org virtual. And you can also view a recording of this session and hundreds of others at the same website, www.pacac.org slash virtual. And now without further ado, I will turn it over to Stony Brook University. Hello and welcome everyone. So please allow me one second while I pull up presentation. Okay, so we'll just present like that. But hello and welcome everyone to Stony Brook University's information session. My name is Emilio Barvai and I have the pleasure to be facilitating today's information session along with some amazing student leaders with us here today, both Emma and Varsha, who will um, be formally introducing themselves in a little bit. Um, but like was stated earlier today, we're going to have an information all about Stony Brook University. Um, we're gonna go through all aspects of a general overview um, and of course, if you do have any questions, inquiries, or need further clarification any step of the way, please feel free to go directly to that chat box. Um, we will be doing a Q&A session towards the end, so we look forward to that and all your amazing questions. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Stony Brook University's community. All right, so in regards to the community, Stony Brook is part of the SUNY system. So we are one out of 64 SUNY campuses. Um, and we are one out of four university centers. Um, and SUNY stands for the State University of New York. So as we have a little bit of an aerial view of, about of what Sunny Brook University looks like, I'll just name a couple aspects of the community. Um, so about three miles north from us, we do have the West Meadow Beach, um, amazing opportunity for our students. We are on the North Shore of Long Island, so we are surrounded by water, um, a beautiful landscape and atmosphere for our students. Several miles east of campus is the village of Port Jefferson, um, which is a really small town with lots of cool coffee, um, coffee houses, dinery shops, and a bunch of other entertainment for our students. Um, in addition to that, over there in Port Jefferson, we also have a ferry stop, um, which can actually take you to Connecticut in just about an hour. 10 minutes south of campus, we also have the Smith Haven Mall. Um, again, another great opportunity for our students, lots of cool shops stores um, and other things for our students to partake in. Um, and on the west side of campus, we do have the LIRR. Um, so this is a really cool thing on campus. It's a stop, the Long Island River will actually stop in campus. Um, and this train can take you directly all throughout Long Island, but also um, in New York City in just over an hour as we only are 60 miles away. Um, and this is a great opportunity for our students, whether they have an internship, employment, or other recreational opportunity in the city. Um, but additionally, I would like to point out some of our amazing academic resources directly on campus, and that can include both our medical school, dental school, and even our university hospital center. Um, so lots of cool things happening on campus. And of course, if any of these things, either on campus or off campus, interest you, we do have a shuttle service on campus, which can take you to many stops on campus or off campus. Um, so definitely, you'll be able to get around. So I'm going to continue on and just talk a little bit about um, Stony Brook University's um, class setting. So we do have a 19 to one student faculty ratio. And so what this means is that if you are teaching a, a student seeking some personal attention, we do have the faculty, um, professors, advisors, and other staff who are here and ready to help you. In regards to our academic programs, we do have over 200 academic programs here at Stony Brook University. 
Um, and all those different academic programs will ideally fall into one of these colleges or schools. So the College of Arts and Sciences being one of our largest colleges um, houses really a lot of different programs ranging from the um, arts, the fine and performing arts students, the humanities students, the social and behavior sciences students, um, the humanities. So just to name a few academic majors that I can think of, um, biology, chemistry, um, biochemistry, physics, um, anthropology, women's studies, political science. Um, so lots of cool programs are in the College of Arts and Sciences, um, but also we have our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, which stands for CEAS. Um, and this houses are more technical types of majors. So all the different engineering programs, um, but also our computer, sci computer science program as well will fall under CEAS. Please keep in mind that these are restricted programs. Um, and so we do have some additional admissions criteria for these programs. We would like to see that our students have both physics and calculus done by their senior year in high school um, in order to qualify for these different programs. We also have our College of Business, which houses our popular um, business management program, of course, with different concentrations such as accounting, um, marketing, and finance. Um, but we also have our School of Journalism, which is in fact the only school of journalism in the entire SUNY system. Um, and we have different concentrations here as well, such as print journalism, broadcast journalism, um, and even digital journalism as well. And then we have the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, um, really amazing program. You know, here in this image, you can see some of our soul mass students um, sitting here by the coast, I believe in our Southampton part of campus. Um, and it really shows that we want our students to of course learn in an academic setting inside the classroom, but to also get hands-on experience. Okay, and the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences um, will house our environmental studies program, sustainability studies, um, and of course, marine sciences as well. All right, in addition to those academic programs, let's speak a little bit more about some of the specifics. So we do have a School of Nursing and School of Social Welfare program. Both of these programs are considered upper division programs. So typically students, um, first year students will come and take about two years of prerequisite pre-admission coursework before they get directly admitted or apply to get direct admission into one of these programs. We do also have a School of Health Technology and Management. Um, and also, if you are interested in just studying medicine or dental medicine, we do have those programs here for you as well. All right, so in regards to those students who are interested in going into healthcare, um, maybe you are a pre-law student here, you are pre-med, pre-dental, pre-veterinary, whatever that may be, we do have full-time staff professionals who are here and ready and prepared to help you um, to ensure that you do have a competitive application to get into one of these programs. We understand this process is competitive and it can be a little bit stressful at times. So we do have these pre-professional advisors who are gonna make sure you have the necessary prerequisite and academic coursework completed, um, but also that you have the necessary involvement done, whether that's community service or you have those volunteer experiences or that internship opportunity, whatever it may be, we do have pre-professional advisors here who are gonna make sure this path is a lot more seamless for you. All right, we are a top one research institution. And so what this means is that we definitely value research here at Stony Brook University. Um, and I just wanna let all of you know that research is for students of all academic majors. It does not matter what program you are interested in or what program you are pursuing, um, as we do have so many different research environments, such as a political science lab, a biology lab, um, and some students might even take advantage of an opportunity in the Brookhaven National Laboratory, um, which is a facility that we actually co-manage here at Stony Brook University. So lots of great opportunities for students of all academic backgrounds um, and a great, uh, a great place to visit or a great thing to take a part of is our Eureka program, which stands for Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities. Um, this is a great place and a great program just to really get some experiences and some knowledges about what are some of the research opportunities here for you, whether it's on campus or off campus, we do have those experiences and we are here and ready to help you. Of course, I always let students know to potentially speak to your faculty member, to a professor um, who's teaching one of your courses and see if they have a research opportunity that's of interest to you um, and that maybe aligns with your future endeavors or career trajectories or whatever you're interested in doing. Um, and you never know, maybe they know another faculty member who has something of interest to you. All right, so now I'm going to pass on the presentation to Emma, who's gonna speak on some amazing aspects about both study abroad, but also our first year experience. So I'll let Emma take it away now. 
Thanks, Emilio. So hi, everyone. I am Emma. I am a senior here at Stony Brook. I am a biology major with a concentration in developmental genetics. And I also have dual minors in chemistry and anthropology, and I'm on the pre-medicine track as well. I'm from Massachusetts, so in a normal semester, I would be living on campus, but like many of you, I'm doing school online. Um, in terms of involvement, I'm involved in a couple of different things, both on and off campus. I work in the undergraduate admissions office. I have two research internships. I volunteer at Stony Brook Hospital. I'm a teaching assistant for the biology department, and I am vice president of two different clubs on campus. So if you have questions about any of those, I'd love to answer them. Um, but I'm going to go into our study abroad programs here. So we offer a programs spanning over 25 countries, um, and they give you lots of great exposure to language, experiential learning, internships, all sorts of classes, which is really exciting. And one of the greatest things that the study abroad office offers is that since Stony Brook is part of the SUNY system, um, if Stony Brook doesn't have a program that you are looking for, you can go through any of the other 64 SUNY schools to do their study abroad programs if they have something that you're looking for. So um, they're very receptive to anybody. They say that any major can study abroad um, and they also have opportunities for scholarships and financial aid if that's something you're looking for. Um, they're really great people to talk to. Can we go to the next slide, please? So another really great thing about Stony Brook is we have something called our undergraduate freshman experience. So the way that this happens is when you are admitted into Stony Brook and you decide to come, you are assigned to one of six undergraduate colleges. Each of them are themed and they are centered around a residential area here on campus. So the six themes are arts, cultures, and humanities, global studies, which I was a part of as a freshman, human development, information and technology studies, leadership and service, and science and society. This is really working out for our retention rate, um, which means how many of our freshmen return their sophomore year. It's high at 89%, and freshmen really get a lot out of these programs. They get a chance to meet people who have similar interests than you, and these interests can be outside your major, which gives you an opportunity to be really um, well-rounded in your studies. Um, in these undergraduate colleges, you're assigned an academic and a faculty advisor, and you also take two freshman seminar classes, um, and they are very small, about 19, uh, 19 students, and you're with a professor in your area of interest and also a teaching fellow. Um, and it really gets you off to a good start by grouping you with people who share those interests. Um, I really enjoyed my time during my freshman year, I was in global studies, so I took classes on um, the global water crisis and then also journalism and current events across the world, which was really cool. Um, so at this point, I'm going to pass it over to my fellow student Varsha, and she's going to talk about campus life and sports. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everyone. My name is Varsha Paretti, and I am a current sophomore and health science major here at Stony Brook University. Um, regarding my involvement on campus, I also work in the undergraduate admissions office as an intern. I'm a member of SBU Janoon, which is the Bollywood dance team. I'm also a member of the South Asian Student Alliance Club and the Doctors Without Borders Club. So um, coming to the campus life and sports on campus, Stony Brook in general offers over 350 student clubs and organizations. So they vary in um, academic clubs, community service clubs, there might be religious clubs. We also have social groups and um, Greek life as well. So if you wanted to check out our specific clubs, you can go to SB Engaged, which is um, our specific website that'll give you a list of all the clubs that we offer. Um, we also have some awesome events and traditions known as Strawberry Fest, Earthstock, Roth Pond Regatta, Wolfstock, and so many more. So my personal favorite was Homecoming Weekend. Um, this is the first home football game of the year, and 
It's an entire weekend of celebrations. The night before homecoming, there's an event called Sea Wolves Showcase, which is a talent show where various students and performance groups showcase their talents. Um, this is usually this usually takes place in our infamous Stellar Steps. And for the homecoming game, it's an event that you cannot miss. During any sports events, everyone is dressed up in their storybook gear, cheering on our team and our um, our great mascot, Wolfie the Sea Wolf. The cheerleaders, dance teams, and marching band are always there, and they always know how to rile up the crowd. Um, so going to the next slide, Stony Brook is home to over 20 Division I sports teams, and some of them have been very successful. Um, an example is this year our women's basketball team won their conference, and um, the women's lacrosse team has also um, been champions for the past six years. And Stony Brook also offers a lot of different club sports and intramurals as well. So um, they, there are a variety of those that you can just go to tryouts for. Um, and we also have an awesome recreation center that's open to everyone. There's so many different workout opportunities. There are classes that you can take. Um, you just have to sign up for them through our app. And um, now at this point, I'd like to throw it back to my colleague, Amelia. Perfect, thank you so much, Emma and Varsha, um, for speaking about some amazing campus life aspects here at Stony Brook University. Um, now I'm going to speak a little bit about the application process for our first year applicants. So as you see here, that priority deadline for our first year applicants is January 15th. Um, and so really what that means is we um, would prefer that all applicants supply and, and submit all of their materials by that priority deadline. Of course, typically decisions will go out around sometime in January all the way up until April 1st. And then really you have about from April 1st to May 1st, so about a month to really make that decision as to whether or not you want to be part of the Seawolf family. Of course, within that application process, we need you to apply to Stony Brook either using the common application, the SUNY application, or the coalition application. It's really up to your preference, but of course, I highly recommend the common application for our first year students, um, just because it really gives a great holistic perspective as to who that student is. Um, along with that application, we also need your official high school transcript. And then of course, we need your test scores and supplemental materials. Of course, if you are a student who's applying in the next coming terms, we are test optional. So we're test optional for the spring 2021 semester, fall 2021 semester, and spring 2022 semester. All right, so if you're applying to any of those academic terms, you do not need to supply with those test scores so that ACT or that SAT score. Um, your supplemental materials will, of course, include your recommendation along with your college essay. Um, please keep in mind that you're asking a recommender who thinks highly of you and who can say some really great things about who you are as a person um, and the experiences that they've had with you in whatever setting that may be. And of course, in your college essay, it's a great way to, for us to really know about who you are as a person, um, but also to see if you're able to articulate yourself um, in that writing piece. Okay, and so here you'll see, um, you'll get a more in-depth knowledge of what the class profile has looked like in the past, so specifically our fall 2020 class. All right, so this will give you in the top left corner, really the middle 50% as to what our students who were enrolled previously, what are some of the credentials that they came in with? All right, so this includes our test scores, but also their GPA as well. Um, so that's both the SAT, the ACT, and the GPA represented on both a 100 point scale, but also a 4.0 scale, depending on uh, your specific high school. Please know that these figures by no means are a cutoff. There is a percentile of students who will, of course, come below this. And of course, there's a percentile of students who, of course, will get admitted below these figures. Um, you'll see here that out of the 32 applications that we received for our fall 2020 class, um, we did end up enrolling a little over 3,000. And on the right side, you'll really see um, some information about the diversity of our campus, something that we really, really value here at Stony Brook University. Um, and of course, not just race and ethnicity wise, but also the demographic, the geographic background of where our students are coming from. As you can see for our fall 2020 class, we were able to admit students from all over the country, but also outside of the US as well. 
So as you can see, both Emma and Varsha are both out-of-state students, and we have been able to admit students from 38 states as of fall 2020, but also 17 other countries besides the US. So in regards to our honors programs here at Stony Brook University, we really love to challenge our students and a great way to do that is through some of our honors programs. So these are some of our most popular honors programs here at Stony Brook University. So to start off with the Honors College, this is a small community really focused on curriculum. So you'll be taking courses with other honors students. Um, and then we also have our Women in Science and Engineering, also known as our WISE program. And within this program, this is for women identifying students who are interested in studying in the STEM fields. So within this program, you're really gonna get some good faculty mentorship, but you also might also be uh, paired up with another student, upperclassman who is in the WISE program as well. And really some great and special um, design research opportunities specifically designated for those WISE students. Um, in addition to that, we do have our University Scholars Program, which is our largest honors program. Of course, yes, this does have a flexible curriculum, but these students are really, really pertain to doing some community service um, and community-based initiatives, whether that's on our campus community or outside our campus community as well. Okay, Oops. Okay, so here we're gonna talk a little bit about Stony Brook University's cost of attendance. So as you see here for a New York state population, our total cost of attendance is um, about 25,000 for the whole academic year. Of course, the only really thing that we need from students is the tuition and fees. So that will be a little over $10,000 per academic year for our incoming students. Um, of course, if you're looking for residing on campus, but also getting that um, full um, um, food experience as well, meal plan, sorry, the word, skip my mind. If you're also looking for a meal plan, also residing on campus, that will bring you to a total of about $25,000 for the full academic year. For our non-residential population, so for our out-of-state students and also our international students, that total cost of attendance is a little over $42,000 for that whole academic year. Just to let you know, these figures by no means incorporates financial aid or scholarships that students are, of course, bringing in. As you see here, about 79% of our freshman class does receive some sort of financial aid, which brings these figures down, but also about 70% of our freshman class receives institutional awards. So what does this mean? This means that um, all of our first year students are reviewed um, for merit-based scholarships. Um, and of course, this is for our more high achieving students. So if you are a high achieving student, we will reward you some sort of funds just to attend Stony Brook University, whether that's a couple thousand dollars all the way up to a full ride. Um, but just to let you know, about 70% of our first year class does receive some of those funds to bring down their total cost of attendance. All right, and finally, I would just like to let all of our prospective students with us here today um, and let them know that about 95% of our graduates are either employed um, or continuing their education. Um, and this is really a great figure to speak on. Um, this figure actually has gone up since last year. Last year, I believe we had 94%. Um, but this is a great aspect to speak on um, because, of course, thanks to our student support services, our faculty members, um, our peers and other services on campus, um, students are really out there and doing really great things after they graduate from our campus. Um, but of course, we have to thank the Career Center, who's really doing great things with interview um, workshops, cover letter building, um, internship and job fairs really great opportunities to help students find the right path for them and to make sure they're being successful after they leave our campus. Um, the internship and job fair is a really great experience for students to come um, and really explore and see some of the different opportunities on campus or off campus as well. Um, I know in the past I've seen students dress up, come with their resumes, sometimes um, have an interview right on the spot with an employer um, or maybe even set up an interview time for a later date, but really a great experience and a great opportunity for students to gain those other things, even if they're a first year student and they've only been on campus for a couple of weeks. All right, so here you'll also see our information. So if you do have any other questions that we're not able to answer in our Q&A session, or of course, if something pops up later on after this presentation, you can always email us at enroll at stonybrook.edu, um, or you can give us a call or text us as well. All right, so at this point, I'm going to stop sharing this presentation. And we are going to go directly into the Q&A session. OK, so it looks like we have a question in regards to some of the student support services offered on campus. Um, and really, it looks like this student would like to know 
um, really what is the best student support service, or maybe we can speak about some of the examples, or maybe Emma and, and or Varsha can speak on a student support service on campus um, that really has spoken to you or helped you along your path here at Stony Brook. So Emma and Varsha, do you have a student support service that really has um, helped you with what an ever endeavor, maybe it's your academic or um, it's a residential experience on campus or whatever it may be. Yeah, so um, personally, I use the tutoring center a lot. Um, I used it for both chemistry and calculus. And these people are the students that got A's in the class either the year before or previous years before. And so they're experts in the subject and they're really there to you know help you grasp the information and the topics. And you can schedule a meeting with them um, anytime and then they'll meet up with you. I also um, use the skill-based tutoring, which is they help you with time management, which I had trouble with in the beginning, you know, balancing my social life as well as clubs versus um, school and academics. And that was a huge help for me as well. Perfect, thank you so much, Varsha. Um, it looks like we have another question here in regards to, can you double major on campus? So yes, we do have students who are double majoring. Emma and Varsha, by any chance, do either of you have an additional major or minor? Um, I have two minors, but I don't have a double major. Great, so what was the process like for you? I know um, students are really only able to um, decide one academic major when applying to the institution but it looks like the student wants to know about what that process is like to either pick up another major or minor. Yeah, so it's actually pretty simple as long as you're not in one of the restricted programs that Amelia talked about earlier, which is engineering and computer science. So I actually applied in as a health science major like Varsha, but ended up switching to biology during my first year. And that was actually pretty simple. I was at a major minor event, which happened on campus every semester, I believe. Um, and got my major changed like right then at that event. I talked to the biology advisor and she helped me. Um, all you really have to do is fill out a form and then submit it to the registrar. So she helped me with that. And then adding the minors was the same thing. You just talk to the department um, of the degree you're interested in adding or dropping depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and they'll walk you through that process. So it's really simple. Perfect, thank you, Emma. Looks like we have another question here in regards to applying to the honors program. So what happens if you're denied from an honors program? So great question. Um, in regards to that application process, on the common application, you can actually um, inform us and let us know if you are interested in any of those honors programs that we spoke about prior. Um, in regards to that, you also have to submit a supplemental honors essay. So along with all those other regular materials that we spoke about, you do have to submit um, that supplemental essay um, as well. Um, and of course, if you are denied from any of those honors programs, it does not mean that you are necessarily denied from the institution as you are originally really reviewed um, for admission into the institution and then you are reviewed for admission into those honors programs. So of course, if you're denied from the honors programs, it does not mean that you cannot still come to the institution. All right, it looks like we have another question here in regards to AP and college credits, so yes, we do accept both advanced placement um, and college courses as well. So if you um, were able to take an AP course in high school, that is great. As long as you typically have earned a score three or higher on that exam, we will um, accept it and grant you college credit. Of course, if you were able to take actual college courses as well at an actual institution, um, typically as long as you have earned a C or higher at an accredited institution, we will accept those credits as well, okay? All right, so it looks like we have another question here in regards to weekend life on campus. Um, so this is a great question for either Emma and Varsha. I know right now things are um, not the same as they were prior, but if you can think back to um, your past experiences on campus, what has weekend life been like? Um, you know, is there any clubs and organizations that are specifically doing something, maybe something in the residential space? Um, overall, wh what would you say weekend life is like here at SBU?
So I personally, since I'm an out-of-state student from Massachusetts, I wasn't able to go home as often. So um, weekend life was very important to me. So there's usually always something going on in the student activity center and clubs and organizations have events going on, whether that may be weekdays or weekends. Um, so we have an app called Cork, and that basically has a list of everything that'll be happening on campus. You can um, break it up by category, by food, by specific club, anything like that. So there you can basically plan out your activities for the weekend. Um, also in specific residential buildings, um, I'm personally a football fan. So uh, every Sunday we would have a um, football watch. We would all go into the common room and watch the football game. I really enjoyed that. So that's basically what I did most of my weekends on campus. Perfect. I, I think you brought up some great aspects, even in the residential spaces. Um, if you are residing on campus, you have some amazing resident assistants, um, of course, supervised uh, by a residential hall director who will do some amazing programming, um, which will a lot of times center around your undergraduate college, what Emma spoke about prior. Um, and it's a really great opportunity to meet other students as well who share some of the same interests as you. Um, so definitely take advantage of some of the traditions such as homecoming, like Marsha spoke about, but maybe even if you do reside on campus, some of those different programmings that happens there. Um, so it looks like we have another question in regards to um, living on campus. So yes, um, we, we do have students who reside on campus. Even right now, we have a population of students who are residing on campus. Of course, um, not the same number as prior before the pandemic, given everything going on. Um, but we do have a percentage of students who are residing on campus, who are taking in-person cor uh, in -person courses, um, as well as students who are uh, remotely studying from home and, and taking um, courses remotely and, and virtually online. Um, in regards to a traditional year, we will have um, really typically about over 10,000 students residing on campus. Um, at on campus, we do have um, quarter style living, suite style living, and also apartment style living. Um, really great experiences. Apartment style living is for our upperclassmen, um, but really all different types of styles of living um, are great experiences. Um, and each style of living will have resident assistants who are always there to assist you and of course do programming no matter what environment that may be. Um, both Emma and Varsha, you have both lived on campus, correct? Great, so can either of you just speak about what that experience has been like for you? Um, I know we spoke a little bit about um, that already, but is there anything particular that you can share about uh, residential life? Yeah, so I can take this one. I've lived in three of the four styles of housing, so I can touch a little bit on those. So my freshman year, I lived in the corridor style housing, which I describe it as like what you see in TVs and movies where it's your room in a hallway um, and you have you and your roommate um, and then just your, your dorm room. Um, so that's basically what it's like. It's a hallway of double rooms. Usually there are some singles depending on the, on the building, but for the most part, it's you and one other roommate. You might be tripled in the beginning of the semester, but that usually gets resolved pretty quickly as the school realizes where their open spaces are. Um, and then your hallway shares one or two bathrooms, depending on the size. Um, the bathrooms are cleaned every day. And there was, I never had an issue with the, you know, the bathrooms being full at, at certain times. Um, so that was always great. And then the buildings each have one or two laundry rooms, again, depending on the size, um, and a kitchen that you're welcome to use at any time, day or night. Um, and then in the residential areas, they're, they're groups of residential buildings, they have a uh, like smaller amenities like uh, the residential fitness centers, the sink sites, which is computer sites. Um, they have their RHD offices if you need anything uh, that they can help you with. Um, and then some of the other styles of housing, we have our suite style, which I lived in last year. And that is two or three of those double rooms with a shared common area and a shared bathroom. So they're a little bit more private and a little bit bigger um, because you do have those extra rooms. Uh, the bathrooms of those are cleaned once a week, so you are more responsible for your own space. Um, and then that one again has the laundry room and the kitchen, and all of them also have lounge areas 
like Varsha mentioned, she would go to the lounges and watch the football games. They all have those. Some of them it's only on the ground floor. Some of them it's on every floor. And then also, again, depending on where you are, like which residential area you are, some of them have kitchens on every floor. The cooking buildings have those. Um, and then when you get into upperclassmen, we have the apartments, like Emilio mentioned, and we also have the single suite styles, which is, again, those suites with four or six this time, depending on the building, single rooms, um, a bathroom, and a common area. So really whatever you're looking for, you can find. Um, some people prefer one or the other. Some people stay in the same room all four years. That's an option. Um, people jump around. You can choose your roommate. You can choose to not choose your roommate and go random. So there's lots of options for living on campus. Perfect. Thank you so much, Emma. I learned a lot more about uh, the residential portion. Um, here at Stony Brook. And again, I didn't mention earlier, but we do have the largest residential population um, in regards to the whole SUNY system. So residing on campus really has some great aspects, some great programming, um, and some different environments, great environments um, that Emma spoke about. Um, so if you are interested, definitely seek out um, our residential process on campus. Um, as it is very seamless, just as Emma mentioned. Looks like we have another question in regards to what is your early action and early decision deadline. So here at Stanford University, we are not early action, or early decision. We are more so rolling, um, rolling basis admissions. So that means we have a priority deadline and we would like all of our applicants to apply by then. Um, given any applicants apply after a priority deadline, um, they will be reviewed more so on a space availability case by case basis. Okay, so it doesn't look like there are any more questions um, that I can see. Again, if there are, is anything else that comes up at a later time, please feel free to email us at enroll at stonerbrook.edu. We do also have a new feature on our website um, called chat with a student. So you'll be able to chat and speak to some amazing students just as Emma and Varsha have with you today um, and get some great aspects on the student perspective if that's something you're looking for. Um, and you can also speak to admissions counselor as well through our live chat feature. So some really great opportunities um, to get and learn some more information about Stony Brook. All right, so I'll um, have Liz come back. And thank you so much, um, Emilio and Emma and Varsha. I appreciate you taking the time to participate in the PACAC program today. Uh, for those of you who are attending live, there is a brief four question survey to complete at the end and we appreciate your feedback. And if you'd like to view a recording of this session or any others, you can do so at the PACAC website. It's www.pacac.org slash virtual. Thanks everyone, have a great night. Thank you.